ahead and turn on your Bibles or turn on your phone or open up your Bible and turn with me to the New Testament of the book of Titus. The book of Titus. And please stand. It's our custom here as we stand in reverence to God's word. All over the sanctuary, if you are able, please stand. The book of Titus, interesting book. So we're studying this weekend. I like Titus. Another one of Paul's sons. He instructed to be separate, to hold to the truth. The church has deviated from compromising. Yes, Lord. If you already have it, when you have it, say amen. amen. Chapter 2, starting in verse number 11, reading from the New Living Translation. It says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom. My God, he's telling us how to live. And righteousness and devotion to God. That's three points right there, Pastor. Wisdom, righteous, and devotion. To who? God. Not man. God. While we look, verse 13, while we look forward, that's forward thinking, setting your mind on things above, living with wisdom, with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. Verse 14 says, he gave his life, thank you Lord, to free us from every kind of sin. You and I, I and you don't have to be dominated. He gave his life so that we could have victory over sin. But you got to put to death the sinful flesh by way of the spirit. That's how you overcome sin. You can't overcome sin. Flesh, birth, flesh. Spirit breaks birth, spirit. Flesh produces death and spirit produces life. Oh, I'm going to teach you tonight. It says uh, he gave his life. To free us from every kind of sin To cleanse us Thank you God And to make us his very own People totally committed To doing good deeds Verse 15 says You must teach Paul is telling the young men of God These things and encourage the believers to do them uh, You have the authority to correct And when necessary uh, So don't let anyone disregard My God what you say Father thank you Lord my belly is full of fire. Speak with revelation. Teach with encouragement. But teach with substance. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let the church say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Grace, church, is. Get your notes out, please. And uh, Mahogany, uh, April, y'all getting ready to follow me on the screen. Because I might have to have someone put scriptures up on the screen. Depending on how God take me. Uh, but grace is defined, my God, as the undeserved love and favor of God. Mm -hmm. Undeserved. You didn't deserve it. But because of his long suffering and his patience, he gave it to you and I. The Bible says, why you and I, pastors, was yet in sin. Y'all two on the three on the front row, Sharon, Madeline, and uh, y'all look at me. Why we were yet in sin. Christ was sitting up in heaven and he thought enough of us while we was running wild and crazy. Yeah. The Bible says while we was yet in sin, Christ came and died for you and I. Now how is it that Christ, while we was yet in sin, Christ came and died for we wasn't even on earth yet? Because every last one of us is in the mind of Christ. Yeah. So he already saw the sin they already saw the problems, the mistake. Y'all need to go with me. Get your pen and your paper out. I promise you. Oh, my God. We didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve it, my God. But he saw us. He saw what we was going to become and not what we was. He knew we was going to be born and shaped in iniquity. But he saw past all that and allowed his blood to cover us. Oh, somebody ought to be giving God the glory. Mm. Thank you, Lord. So, 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 uh. When you, when you take a moment and consider all that that means, that his undeserved love and favor, 
towards fallen man, when you take that into thought and consider that uh, and all that it means, it's an awesome thought. It means that any sinner can be saved, any storm can be weathered, any situation can be faced, y'all. And according to the, uh, the definition, uh, accordance definition, the divine, it means, grace means the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in our lives. The divine, so when grace has hit a heart, when grace has come into a life, when grace, my God, has come into the temple, my God, it would have an internal transformation. Yes. Oh, my God, that would show up external in our life. Y'all want to be taught tonight. Okay, so I don't want y'all shouting in. We see there is an outward reflection of what is done in the heart. According to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, the word of God says, My grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. Grace is God's empowerment, church, to live a holy life. Grace empowers you and I to do what we cannot humanly do within our own strength. None of us can live a productive, saved, sanctified life apart from God's grace. And not only that, when you add grace to that, my God, and then you get the anointing with that, you sure is cold-blooded now. You see what I'm trying to say? So many people are frustrated because they're trying to serve God from the flesh. See what I'm trying to say? You can't serve God from the flesh. You got to serve God from the spirit. And let me speak this in the atmosphere, my God, because I've seen many get picked off. If you try to follow this work that God is doing at 205 South Sheridan by way of the flesh, you're going to be a frustrated, miserable person, a part of this family, because you're following the work by way of the flesh. What am I meaning by the flesh? That means you're going to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. It don't matter what God say. It don't matter what I say. It don't matter what the vision is. And all you're going to do is be a frustrated, contaminated, defeated Christian. That's Bible. Because you can't follow God by way of the flesh. Somebody give God a hand. I got your mind all over the place already. So the title of this sermon is Lifestyle Still Matters. Because grace empowers you and I. Oh, my God. Grace empowers you and I to live a life that we could not live apart from God. God has asked you and I to be holy. Why would God ask you and I to be holy if, he, if we couldn't be holy? He would be considered, I'm a teacher now, an unjust God if he would ask you and I, Christian, to do anything that we didn't have the power within to do. Are y'all with me so far? Why would I ask, well, come on somebody, if when your son or your daughter or your grandbaby get to an age where they can ride their little training wheel bike, why would you put them on that at, at six months when you know they're not ready? See what I'm trying to say? And so God is not going to ask you and I to do anything that we don't have the power to do. Grace. Another word for grace is power. Empowerment. My God. So put point number one on the screen for me. Lifestyle still. Look at your neighbor and say, lifestyle still matters. Uh, I posted on my way in, my God. In God's kingdom, there's a mandate and a structure. There's laws, commandments, and ordinance and stuff that we and I have to follow in God's kingdom. And that's in this book right here. This by her, this constitution, is the bylaws in the kingdom. This is what governs the kingdom from Genesis through Revelation. So God commands us, Old Testament, New Testament, to live something. So you bring it up today, in the kingdom, lifestyle still matters, but in church, why doesn't lifestyle still matter? Because we take this one word that I'm talking about, and this is going to turn into a series on Wednesday, grace, and we use it as a license to practice habitual sin. Instead of using it and accepting it to empower me to overcome sin. That's why the church is full of contamination and sin, because we use grace. We got it all out of context, and I have to take some of it off of the people, because if the people are reading their Bible, they will get some revelation. And I put some responsibility, my God, probably more of it on the pulpit, but I have to put some on you. That's why the Bible says study, you study. To show yourself approved. You got to know what the word of God says for yourself. Quit taking my word and quit taking T.D. Jake's word and quit taking George Myers' word. Quit taking Pastor Michael Todd's word, my God. Quit taking uh, Paul Dorothy's word and study the Bible for yourself. To make sure that all of us, my God, is speaking the truth. 
You should be willing to hold all of the people that you listen to accountable. You have that authority, my God. Your soul is at stake. Why would you sit up under something, my God? Who don't be playing Russian roulette with your soul? Be careful what you follow and who you listen to. Don't just follow. life. Look at your name and say lifestyle still matters. Okay, let me make it plain before we get into point one. If I stand up here and preach the gospel, the way the Spirit of God uses me to preach the gospel, and talk about the things that the Constitution tells me to talk about, and then I walk up out of her, and you see this pastor right here in the club with, some, with a big old cigar, my God, a, a, a shot glass of Hennessy. Come on, somebody. Uh, you're going to be like, now that man turned out to be the biggest hypocrite i ever seen. How in the world? See, you wouldn't respect me. So let me ask you this question. Why do you expect me to live something, but I can't expect you to live something? Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Lifestyle still matters. And so that's why I say that you have to be careful what you're listening to and what you're sitting up under. Because if I'm preaching one thing up here, my God, and I'm living something out there, my God, that's different or contrary to what I'm preaching, oh, my God. I think by now, 24 years later, God would have been exposed that. See what I'm trying to say? There'll have been something that you can point to and say, ah, oh, I got him. Because yeah. there are some that's watching and be able to say, I got him. Yeah. I found some out. Just like they're watching and be able to say they got something on me, guess what their enemy doing for you too? Yeah. So you got to understand that lifestyle still matter. Paul is instructing Young Titus, my God, to bring some context to the scripture, my God, that you got to continue, my God, to live a godless life. Stay away from God, my God, from, 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 from all this stuff. Don't, don't live a godly, not godless, godly life. It still matters, okay? So point number one, let's look at this. Uh, grace saves you. Let me give you some biblical teaching because some of us don't understand this. So I don't want to get too excited, but I want to make sure I teach with substance right quick. According to verse 11, the word of God says, For the grace of God has, has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. Every last person that has breath on their body that would ever, I don't care what continent you're on, I don't care where you're from, I don't care what color you are, I don't care where you come from, I don't care about none of that according to the scripture. All. Somebody say all. all. Every last person that ever breathes and walks this earth has an opportunity to be saved. That's right. yeah. It's a choice that you have to make. God can't make that choice from you, yeah. for you. You see what I'm trying to say? The Bible says that God set before you, Lorenzo, life and death, blessings and curses. He says, choose life. When you accept Christ, come on, somebody, you are choosing life over death. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, we was all dead in trespasses and our sins, alienated, separated, cut off from God. Oh, before we came to know God, come on somebody, we was cut off, my God. We was separated because of sin, my God, but God's grace, oh my God, and his mercy, my God, and his shedding of the blood brought us back, my God. Ooh, he purchased us with his own life, come on. He gave his life to buy us back from his corrupt world. And so everybody under the sound of my voice has an opportunity to be saved. Why did the Spirit of God lead me this way? Because you would never be able to stand before God according to the scripture, especially in Romans. The Bible says man will be held without excuse come judgment day. You won't be able to stand before God and say you never had an opportunity to know this man called Jesus who I'm talking about. Nobody. I don't care what it. Well, what about all those people in different countries and all of those type of stuff on there? You got to understand God's sovereignty and God's providence. God know what he's doing over in Africa and all these other places, my God, that they have never heard Jesus. The Bible said after the word of God has been preached to the world, then God will come. He got stuff. He got that in mind, too. While we was yet in sin, before, we was in, before there was a who, what, we, and the world, when me and you, he already died for us. So he got all that stuff figured out. All these little countries that we don't know nothing about, these nations and all these people that's back over in the jungles and bushes and all of those. Yeah, he got all that figured out. He's God. He really He's God. He said, my thoughts is not your thoughts and my ways is not your ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So quit trying to bring God down to the flesh and understand that God got everything under control. Why would he say in the word of God? I'm teaching tonight, woman of God. Why would he say in the word of God? He died for all. That means everybody that got living breath that comes out of a woman's womb, my God, has an opportunity if they live and start walking on this earth to give their life to Christ sooner or later. Well, what about those that died without ever hearing about God? I, can't, I, I, don't know how to, I don't know what to say about that. That's God's business. I'm going to stay in my lane. 
As I told y'all Sunday, I don't want nothing that I can't handle. If I can't handle it, don't give it to me. If I ain't supposed to know it, don't reveal it to me. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That's what happened to you. Get in everybody else's business. You start trying to mm, dip and dab and all this stuff, and now you're confused. Stay away from that stuff. Paul tells Timothy and Titus, stay away from all that stuff. Quit getting in God's business. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Write that down. Quit getting in God's business. Get out God's way. You got enough trying to worry about your own life. So point number one, my God, God's grace saves you and I. Uh, grace brings salvation. According to Ephesians chapter 2, write that down. Please write that down. I'm going to give you some scripture. Chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. I'm going to read it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. God saved you by his grace when you believe. I'm going to say that right there. When you believe. So, my God, when you get up out of your seat, when the pastor or whoever gives an altar call and say, come down for first time salvation. If you came, come on, if you came down here because the pastor or the leader, whoever asked you to come down here and repeat a prayer, please catch the revelation. Many people's souls under the sound of my voice online as well as in her is that state. If you have come down, no matter where you was at, whether it's her or some other church or wherever you was at, and you came down her to give your life to Christ, and you did not, even though you said, the, repeated the prayer after the person that was leading you to say it, but you did not believe in the one he was talking about, you are not saved. That's Bible. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It says, my God, you are saved, my God, when you believe. So do you really believe? Because you can get up and come. That don't mean that you believe. That don't mean you believe because you have come down here and repeated a prayer. You know how many things we say and talk about and we don't believe it? You know how many things we speak in the atmosphere? We don't believe half the stuff we be speaking in the atmosphere. That's why the Bible says, let me balance this. That's why the Bible says, my God, anything that's not done in faith is sin. The only thing, you got to have faith to believe that God died and rose on the third day. Without it, you can't be saved. Oh, okay, okay. When you believe. The Bible says you must believe. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says you must believe that he is. That he is. You got to believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligent seek him. So you got to believe that when you come down here by faith, when you come down here by faith, when you say that you confess the sinner's prayer, you're believing by faith and you're accepting it by faith because of your belief system. That's why the uh, discipleship one class, sorting up my God, deals with your belief system. Because we got to get our mind right. It's not enough just to come down and repeat something that you don't have faith and you don't believe. Oh, I'm out there. I didn't get out the boat. But they watch it, and I stand behind it. You can email me, you can send for me, and we can talk about it. I can give it to you line upon line, precept upon precept. My God, when you have faith and mixed with belief, when you accept Christ, then you are saved. That's Bible. And you can't take credit for it. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for good works. I mean, for the good things you and I have done, so none of us can boast about it. According to Romans chapter 4, 4 through 5, write that down, Romans 4, 4 through 5. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work. Look how God shifts. If you go to your job, and at the end of the week, give me what belongs to me. See what I say? But you can't approach God like that because you can't earn you didn't work for God. Your work, doing good works, vacuuming, cleaning up, my God, and all this stuff. You can't earn this salvation. He already did it and paid the price for it, so you can't earn it. Mm, are you with me so far? But people who are counted as righteous, my God, not because of the work, but because of their faith. You're counted as righteous because of your faith, not your works. They say, they say, and I don't see no children or literature, they say uh, H-E-L-L is paved with good intentions. On your way to that H-E-L-L is paved with good intentions. You could do all that, you can give away a million dollars a day. 
You can feed the homeless. You can go to the prisons. You can go to the jails. You can do whatever. Clean, vacuum. You can dust. You can do it all. My God. But if you have not had faith and belief in Jesus Christ, the finished works of Calvary, oh my God, you can do all that external stuff and still bust hell wide open. Somebody look at your name and say, lifestyle still matters. Okay, because let me help you with that. God dropped that on me uh, years ago because, my God, when we have proper biblical faith and our faith has been, sound, has been governed by sound teaching, it will produce a, a change in your life. When your faith is governed by sound teaching. There's many weary things out there concerning faith. Some people believe if they cut themselves, they in faith. Some people believe Old Testament, if they burn their children, they in faith. Some people believe if I got 16 wives, I'm in faith. Yeah. That's why I said there's a whole lot of stuff out there. Yeah. Be careful. That's why I said sound. Biblical faith. Right. Everything that's got faith, our Jesus connect to it, don't mean it's Jesus in faith, y'all. Right. Study to show yourself approved. Say, God, increase my discernment. Help me be sensitive to what's truth and what ain't true. Even this pastor's up here teaching who I love and is submitting up under. If he ain't talking about truth, then convict me. But don't come to me talking about some mess, my God, off of emotions. You better prove it when you set a meeting up with me because I don't want to hurt your feelings. Because I'm going to give it to you. Thus says the Lord. Somebody give God a hand. I adopted that from my great T.D. Jakes. When you come into the king's chamber, be ready. Don't come half holy. Dr. Miles Monroe said, my God, you get one shot. You get one shot. The late doctor said you get one shot to come into his presence. Make sure you're ready. When you get in, when you, oh my God, you get one shot. So you go to the interview, that may, you make sure you prepare. Anything in life, be prepared. Yeah. Right. Count up the cost. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you're dressed right. Make sure you, you looked over the notes. Any questions that they made, that they told you, man, you need to know these questions. My God, take time to study. Take time to review. Make sure you're cold. Matter of fact, get your stuff earned and ready the night before so you don't have no excuses. Make sure the key is cold is earned. Make sure the car got gas in it. Make sure your phone is charged up. You go into the presence, my God, who, with the opportunity to seize the moment. That's what discipleship do. It prepares you for every moment in life. Oh, my God, this is heavy. So up on the point number one, this is what grace, is, grace does when you're really saved. It cleanses you from sin by the blood of Jesus. Revelation 1, 5 says, and from Jesus Christ, he is the faithful witness to these things, the first one to rise from the dead and the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from the sins by the shedding of blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there would not be any forgiveness of sin. As I taught y'all before, come here, Pastor, just like in the Indian, in the tribe, in their culture, my God, they would cut their hands with their knife and they would just shake. Blood covenant. Blood covenant. Indians. Right there. Blood touching blood. Symbolic for covenant. Without the shedding of blood, there will be no forgiveness of sin. That's why I be trying to teach y'all why God, serving God, is about covenant. It's not about church. We serve a God of covenant. When he brought the children of Israel up out of Egypt, he was trying to bring them back to covenant because they was used to Pharaoh's voice. Everybody got a physical Pharaoh in your life. That means that voice is louder than God's voice. Ah, the children, my God, listened to what Pharaoh said, eat, when they ate. When he said, don't eat, they didn't eat. When he said, take a bath, they took one, my God. They was trained to know Pharaoh, a physical Pharaoh's voice over God's. So when God bought them woman of God up out of Egypt, he stopped by the wilderness and began to train them, my God, by feeding them from mamma from heaven and water up out of rock. What God was doing is trying to bring them back vertical. Yeah, my God, come on, because they was used to Pharaoh. Some of us right now are still listening to Pharaoh, even though you are saved. You have been brought up out of Egypt by the shedding of the blood. Now quit listening to Pharaoh and listen to God. 
That's why you got to be sensitive. That's why you got to be studying. That's why you got to be praying. That's why we got to put to death, my God, all the sensual pleasures. That's why you got to back away from people, places, and things. That's why we got to continue to flip those pleasures and go in the dark, my God. That's why you got to stay on your face. That's why you got to fast and pray, my God. If not, them pharaohs are going to come back. All that stuff that God delivered you from, all that stuff that God saved you from, if you don't guard your freedom, guess what? You'll be right back in bondage to the same thing that God delivered you from. It's one thing to get free. It's another thing to maintain your freedom. Many people could get free, but they can't maintain their freedom. I give God the glory, baby. You better watch those front rows because they still looking. They still knocking. They still trying to get back in. That's what you do when you read the word of God. It trains you to know God's voice and not Pharaoh's voice. Pharaoh is your past. Pharaoh is your pain. Pharaoh is your disappointment. Pharaoh is your discouragement. Pharaoh is your lack of self-esteem. Pharaoh is having the wrong image. Pharaoh is struggling with your identity as a man or a woman. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You got to be careful. And make sure that what you're quoting, you believe. Because as I've been telling y'all since we started, it's belief that's mixed with faith. And faith and belief go hand in hand. You can't tell me you got faith if you don't believe. And you can't tell me you believe if you ain't got faith. They kiss one another. Lean over and kiss your wife. They kiss one another. Faith, kiss, Misty. Belief, kiss, faith. Faith, kiss, belief. They go hand in hand. Don't tell me you believe, my God, you ain't got no faith in what you believe in. Somebody said lifestyle still matters. And so you got to understand you've been cleansed from sin by the blood. Without the blood, you and I is guilty, Sister Jackie. That's why you and I can go to God and say, Lord, uh, 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my faults, God is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse. Key word, don't overlook that. He is faithful and just, God, 1 John 1 and 9, Laquetta, my God, to, to, to forgive first and then cleanse. Forgiveness comes first, then the cleansing second. So without the confessing, so you got to talk to God. Quit talking about God. Me and God got our own thing. Because uh, yeah. sometimes, my God, oh, my God, sometimes, you watch me now, I'm careful. Sometimes, my God, you'll be right here praying because you come with the intentions to confess because you don't want nobody to know. So you'll come out here and talk to God. And God, if you're sensitive enough and you're serious enough and you ain't concerned about the perception of people, come on, somebody. And if you like your pastor, you've been delivered from the opinions, your opinions. I'm delivered from your opinion. If you've been delivered, my God, from the opinions of people, God will talk to you while you're on the altar and say, you know what? That thing you just confessed to me, now go tell your sister about it. But God, confess your faults one to another. Don't be super spiritual. Say, well, that's to God. Now, we can't bring it up to that one to another because, you know, saying the Trinity. Oh, my Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, so I'm going to confess to Jesus. Uh, that's who you're supposed to confess to. But God sometimes say, Ray, because you know why I say that? Because the Spirit of God say you need accountability horizontal. You need accountability in the natural. Now, go confess to your sister. My God, I need you to hold me accountable for this right here. That's how you put stomp the devil's head, right? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I feel. Ah, my God. So sometimes you need to go confess to your brother and say, hey, look here. I'm struggling with that, with, 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 with that computer. Hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's real talk. How bad do you really want to get free? Because when you're saved, really saved, you'll do stuff like that. When you're really saved, you'll look like a fool to her job well done, my good and faithful servant. See, when you're really saved, mother, you'll do what most professing Christians with no power won't do. Because you don't care. I'm trying to work this thing out. That's why the Bible says work it out with fear and trembling. The Bible says God is a consuming fire. Oh, my fur is trembling. Don't get too comfortable thinking because you just said a little sinner's prayer and you think you're saved. And I'm not questioning if you're saved, but don't think you can just do anything. The Bible says God is a consuming fire. The word of God says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Oh, my God, will you understand the reverence of God and that God is a consuming fire? It ought to make you want to clean up your life. It ought to make you want to start loving. It ought to make you want to forgive. It ought to make you want to release. It ought to make us. It's, it's dangerous to come before God with all that sin in your life. Life. And it's mockery to God when you and I don't repent and turn from. Right. It's mockery. Hallelujah. When you and I don't repent and turn from, you don't get to come into God's presence with a nasty attitude. Yeah. 
and act like you've been in church because you clapping and serving and God didn't deal with your attitude. That's a mockery. That's when the Bible says, harden not your heart. You know you walked up in there with this stuff on you. Sit down and get before God and get your heart right before you fool around and fall over dead. Somebody give God a hand. Number two, up on the point number one, this is what God did. He delivered you eternally from the penalty of sin. I'm moving quickly, but the Bible says, for the wage of sin, Romans 6, 23, for the wage of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. Let me break that down because I got all levels of spirituality in her. So that's why I have to teach her and her. Look at me, Amber. That's why you got to teach when you get the microphone. Her and her and her. That's three levels. High, middle, and low. And you got to be able to touch everything, my God, inside the house of the Lord. Everybody don't understand that the wages of sin is death. The ultimate goal, I mean the ultimate penalty of consistent habitual sin is physical death and separation eternally from God. There's things when you and I habitually continue to do that eats up. It's called canker worms. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's called canker worms. The little canker worms, the little gnats. As I told y'all Sunday, my God, when the water's stale, gnats and flies is just ah, contaminated. Oh, my God. Uh, the wages, the wages of sin. That what you keep doing. Thank you, work. Think about that. You work. For wages, you work, that means you're active, you're doing something. You consistently going to work, see what I'm trying to say? So I need that, after that 40, uh, if you go 80 uh, and you get a little overtime, I need that uh, time, I need that. I work for that. Well, guess what? The wages of sin. Take the word wages, my God, and look, up, look it up, and it's the practice. Yeah. Yeah. The practice. Just like you go to work Monday through Friday, you try to get that 80, uh, you, I mean that 40, then you try to get that 80, then the other 40 next week, that's, that's practice. You practice it going to work. Well, if you practice it living in sin, it, the ultimate goal is eternal separation from God. If you die outside of making covenant with God. I got a lot of partners that never accepted Christ. And because of the color of the shoes I got on, they never made it in, Jamie, huh? And I know for a fact they're not going to heaven because they never accepted Christ because they died at 15 and 16 and 17. And the Bible says when you and I, this is what a promise. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, when you and I dishonor our father and our mothers, oh my God. When you dishonor, you got to respect the office. Here go another one. It's the repentance. You might not agree with what they done and how they done it, but you got to respect the office. And this is what a promise. You should live, but to dishonor, you will die. And I think about that quite often. I'm looking at some of them right now. I think about Ebony Leon. All my partners that died behind the color, red, and did not accept Christ. And their mamas was in church. So I know they had an opportunity to give their life to Christ. And they may have. But they died outside of God's will for their life. That's why I love God. One, I got so many reasons, Dominique. Because, see, I should have been dead too. Two inches from my juggler vein on my face. I could have died. I wasn't saved. When I got shot up, I could have died. When I was held hostage, I could have died. I could have bust my heart open for OD. Somebody could have shot me down in the street. When they kicked in them dope houses, my God, they could have blown my head off. My God, when I was, mm, see, 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 see. When you're grateful, my God, the blessing is in remember. That's why I go the way I go. Cause my, uh, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm gonna, see, 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 some, see, I talked about me, but you ought to be thinking about you. Can you give God some glory for your own self? Can you give God some glory for your own self? You give God some glory for your own self. Thank you. The wages of sin is death. So habitually sinning eats up the harvest. Habitually sinning causes us to be frustrated. And always blaming people and situations and the devil and all of those type of stuff, which is not true. Sin always attracts pain. Thank you. 
Yes, Lord. Number three, up on the point number one. First, you are delivered from eternal penalty of sin, and then you are assured of heaven. When you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are assured of heaven. Because when let me help you understand something. This is my terminology, my theology. When you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior with faith and belief, eventually, y'all, everybody look at me. I know you're right, but look at me right quick. When you accept Christ by faith mixed with belief, belief mixed with faith, you are born again. When you believe in God's finished works of Calvary, that means him being crucified, buried, and resurrected, and sitting at the right hand of the Father. You believe in all of that mixed with faith and belief. When you accept Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior, for real, there will be an internal awakening. Because before you and I accept Christ, our spirit, Stephen, is dead. When you connect properly with faith and belief, I'm redundant because I want people online and people in here to understand. Did I really respond to them in faith? Did I really respond to them in belief? Because if your faith and belief is mixed right, guess what it's going to cause you to do? When you set your mind, that's what you seek after. So you will have a desire sooner or later come on, come on, to open on. up that Bible, yeah. to find yourself in prayer, Amen. to be, begin to put a mandate. Sometimes you got to put a self-governing mandate on your own life. Quit looking for people to put a mandate on you and put your own mandate. Yeah. Like I did. I told myself when I came home 24 yeah. years, ago, yeah. years ago, Melody, I will not be a hypocrite. I wasn't one for the streets. I won't be one for God. How can I go hard for something that was killing me and then go be a hypocrite for someone that's giving me life? It don't work like that. See, that's the mindset. How can I go hard after the street life and it was killing me? That was wages of sin. That's why I thank God I didn't die, Lorenzo. When they shot you up, son, look at you today. You escaped. Because truth be told, if the devil would have had his way, you would be dead right now. But you're in the house of the Lord with a new mindset, trying to work this thing out. Instead of trying to go back and kill him, he said, I'm going to charge that to the game. My God, come on, somebody. Hey, oh, my God. Uh. You are sure in heaven. John 11, write this down, 25 through 26. John 11, it says, Jesus told her, Talking to Martha, I am the resurrection and life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Verse 26 says, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Talk about eternal salvation. Do, then he said, watch this. Do you believe this, Martha? Watch this. Let me read it again. Anyone, first he said, I am. So you got to believe that he is. Let me break this down. Then he says, anyone who believes, that that word I've been talking about, in me, Jesus. That's who he's he talking about. Will live eternally and you will, you will live on earth. See, many people is existing and not living. That's right. They dominated by the things of this world. Some people go to sleep, mother, and don't never want to wake up. That's not living when you believe in Jesus. Put your faith and your belief in Jesus. Then you will start living. It was times when I walked the streets and I said, God, I want to die. I was tired of being a failure. I was tired. See, I take shoes like this and different clothes like this, and I would give it over to the dope man. Because I can go buy some more. Because my brother was a multi-millionaire and still is, and so he just give me some more money. See, what you don't value, you misuse. Yeah. See, 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 see. Yeah, I, so when I preach and teach, I teach from my disposition. That's why I be so real. I can't tell you about you, and I can barely tell you about them in the Bible, but I bet you I can tell you about me. See what I'm trying to say? Because I know what I was. I know what I used to, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so therefore, 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 I'm trying to teach because I know what I got sitting up under her. My God, it, 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 it says you will live even after that. Everyone who lives in me. See, I am the vine, John 15, write this down, 1 through 5, the gospel of John, chapter 15, 1 through 5. He said, I am the vine and you are the branch. 
Jesus is so simple. We make Christianity very complicated. He says you have a vine and you have a branch. If the branch stay connected to the vine, it lives. Jesus said if you sever or disconnect yourself from me, you die. You know how many people sitting in the churches, my God, Sister Santella, that's dead because they ain't connected to the vine, but they have a whole lot of external movement, external, external uh, movement. Uh, I preached that in the counter years ago at Greenwood. We have the appearance of being alive, but we are zombies. Zombies look alive, but they dead. The church is full of zombies. I'm sorry. Jesus said, my God, I am the vine. The reason why you clean and sober today, son, and the reason why your life is like it is that God has blessed you, son, because you got properly connected to the vine and you have maintained, my God, your connectivity with the vine. And now God has married you. My God, God has married your wife. God has blessed you. You are clean and sober. You got a home, you got a new car. All the stuff, Jamie, all that you think that you couldn't have, now you got because you're living right. I can't get nobody to say that right there. So, 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 when y'all see him down there screaming, when y'all see him down there going hard because he is like his pastor. He's grateful because he didn't think he could, but God knew he should. Come on, somebody. Oh, his life don't look like what he's been through. Hey, my God. He never thought he could do the things God got him doing today. He never thought he could go clean and sober. He never thought he would be a good father. He never thought he would be a good husband. He never thought he would make over $15 an hour. But he got all that going for him right now because he's connected to the vine. And he's living and he's not existing. Oh my God. Jamie, I give God some glory. Amen. The young men of God, my God, and his family, and I'm careful. I'm, I'm careful. I'm careful. Oh my God. But I had my eye on him, and this is the first time you're hearing this. But they come through a situation. Oh my God, the family. And I was watching him. I wanted to make sure that he didn't go backwards because I could have sent him backwards. But he stayed the course, my God. And I give God the glory. Amen. Now let me balance something now. Because God is so good. I told you I got a belly full of fire. I don't want to say nothing to pastor. Because pastor going to tell people my business. Now let me teach y'all something. About this pastor right here. I'm able to make a statement about that man's life. Your life. Her life. Yolanda's life, this life, this life, whoever, because the level of relationship. If you are not in that type of circle, then you will never hear me talk about your life. I know who named the call. Why did I say that? Because some of y'all like, Pastor, be called. No, no, no. I call who God tell me to call because the level of relation. Let me go deep. Let me go. Let me get it off of church. The level of covenant. The level of, the, yeah. see, because they know their life is a testimony. They know what they've been through is a testimony. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Oh, my God. See, you ain't the same with that when you overcame. You ain't the same with somebody using your life when you don't live like you used to live. Only those that can, ah, only those that got something to say because they ain't living nothing. And now the cameras is on you. Don't say my name because I know I ain't doing nothing. Woo, lifestyle still mine. <laughs> Question tonight. Do you know Jesus? If you're looking online, question tonight. I won't even mess with point two. We'll pick that up next week if the Lord delay is coming. Do you know Jesus? When I was at my lowest, I knew of God. See, many people online and in here know of God. And you may have quoted the sinner's prayer, but was it mixed with faith and belief? Do you know this Jesus that shed his blood? Do you know this Jesus that got up? Do you know this Jesus, my God, that saw you being formed in your mama's womb. Do you know this Jesus that wants to give you life and give you life more abundantly? Do you know this Jesus that calls you and I, you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you know this king 
uh, that says, you know what, I'm the head king, but talking about Jesus, and you are the little kings and queens. Do you know me? Uh, when you used to drink that vodka, it tasted real good, didn't it? Uh, and without crazy, if Sharon didn't come home with something. Uh, but have you tasted the goodness of Jesus? <laughs> can't nothing compare to it. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody in this time. I said, can't nothing compare to it. Oh, oh, have you tasted <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> I said, have you tasted Jesus? <laughs> do you know him? <laughs> I said, do you know him? <laughs> do you really, really, really? <laughs> do you really, really, really? <laughs> oh, 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 Jesus. Do you really, really, really? Do you really, really, really? Do you really, really, really? The reason why I ask you, do you know him? Because their faith is mixed with belief. And belief kisses faith. If you have John, 1 John 1 and 9, sooner or later, appetites, passions, wrong desires, fleshly attitudes, sinful lifestyles, compromising God's word to, 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 to support our sinful, or I didn't say y'all, our sinful lifestyle, sooner or later that type of stuff got to die. Because everything, when God delivered the children up out of Egypt, mother, they went through the Red Sea. Yeah. Everything that came out on the other side was supposed to live, and everything that was supposed to die, died. Yes, it when you accept Christ, a lot of stuff supposed to die. Yeah. And then God leaves certain things connected. Go on, sit down. I'm going to finish. I'm not going to point to. God will leave certain things. I'm not going to point to. I promise you. God will leave certain things and God will allow. He will leave and allow certain things to follow you. Even though you have faith, even though you believe and you are saved. But there's certain things like that gin and juice, we passed that. Newport cigarettes, I'm past that. Going to the club, past that. I still stand to the right. I'm trying to work on that. <laughs> I can't get nobody. Jamie, I'm still turning to the left. It's all good. <laughs> I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. But there's certain things that God will leave in your life. I'm going somewhere. Do you know him? Look at your neighbor and say, do you know him? There's certain things, even though you are saved, Q. See, because sometimes when God is taking you high, Oh, stay with me, y'all. Don't miss this. Oh, my God. See, when you're at a level of leadership and your purpose and your assignment, because uh -huh. see, sometimes God will put you yes. on display yes, he will. Yes, he will. with all of our shortcomings, <laughs> all the stuff that he didn't immediately cleanse and deliver you from when you accepted yes, yes. him. And that's a remnant of stuff uh, that's residue yes. left. Yes. Uh -huh. That's residue left and God allow you he allow some residue he allow some stuff to come up from the Red Sea that was supposed to die we think but God said no that's supposed to come because uh, the stuff that's still attached to you when you're flipping the pages when you're studying when you're praying when you're applying the word of God that stuff that people still know about you and that stuff that, that, that we cry about, <laughs> oh, Q, we all feel like that stuff that hurts our hearts, that stuff that we just talked about, the mistakes that you make when you are saved and stuff you go back to and you go up and you come down, you go up and you come down, you do good one week and you fall the next three weeks. Ah, my God. Oh, I thought I was free, but I'm still, uh, I was free from that, now I'm back in there. See, God needs you to be on display for a season. Oh, because somebody need to know that if she and he can come up out of that, and all that they have come through and been through, 
that I know I got a chance. I know I got a slight chance. And she stumbled hard as she was going. Much as she preached. Much as he talked, my God. And he stumbled, but he got back up and now he's set free. Oh, my God. See, because God will use your mess to bring hope, my God. That's why it comes a mess. I turn it into a message. Come on, somebody give God a hand. So to encourage you that yes, some is saved and in faith and do believe. And there's certain things that you and I have attached to us that is called process of transformation. That's why you need to go to class. Because there's certain things that when you accepted Christ by faith, he automatically and instantaneously delivered you from. Five treatment centers could not get me free from crack cocaine, but when I accepted Christ one time, first time I ever accepted Christ, I've been clean and sober 24 years. So, 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 what I, see, I just validated what I'm saying. There's certain things that God will do immediately and other things he will allow to follow you, stay attached to you because somebody needs your testimony. See, some things God has done inside of you to encourage you, he has done it immediately. That's why it's not as strong and bad as it used to be. Because you're really free, you just got to continue to choose life. But there's other things, my God, that God will leave attached to you because uh, he's, it's called working out. Your soul, mind, will, and emotion. And can I tell you something? A lot of our wages is in our mind, will, and emotions. That's why you work out your mind, will, and emotion, soul. That's why you need to continue to add to what God has already and has been doing. Philippians 1 and 6, he who begun a good work. That's why you can't get content when you know you still got stuff following you. You can't say you've been, you've been to class twice so what, but did the class get in you? You've been to class, but has there been any transformation? Ask yourself, and I'm done. Ask yourself, for those that is transitioned from 34 and 34, which is few, and those that's looking online that did not make it, ask yourself. I've been through the vision two or three times. Ask yourself, when you went through the vision, the first and even the second, and I'm going to go up to the third, but it's definitely the second time, are you still struggling with some of that same stuff? Is some of that stuff still following you? That by now it should have died? See, I'm trying to get you to think because I love you. See, because we would justify and say, I've done that. But until it's in your lifestyle, you heard that, but you didn't do that. You heard information, but you didn't mix the information with faith and belief. Because when you, what you believe will begin to bring about a transformation in your heart. What you believe, you worship. If you believe God, you're going to worship God. Class should be filled. Because truth be told, the whole church need to go through the vision. Not because we in sin, because we just haven't arrived. So do you know him? There is a necessity in this hour for new birth, real birth. Not cliche. Not just repeating prayers, but real new birth mixed with faith and belief. Because, see, you got to know. You got to know. I was in the gym working out yesterday, you know, and one of the older white men, he said, he's quiet today because I'm always worshiping God and preaching and to myself and God giving just, not just what I do. And he said, you're quiet today. He said, you okay? I said, oh, yeah, it's Jesus on mine. I'm good. The old man Looked like he was about seven years old, woke out good in good shape. He said, I had a dream, first time he ever talked to me. But for him to say, why are you quiet? That means he's been watching me. See, he said, I had a dream the other night. He said, in the dream, 
the earth opened up and cars fell in a big old hole and people fell in a big old hole. So he said he woke up and he was troubled. That's what he told me yesterday because I didn't woke up today because I consecrated. So he woke up and he was kind of troubled. God, what this mean? What this mean? What this mean? This is what he's saying to me. Now keep in mind, he said, you're quiet. See, I probably needed to be quiet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus. Watch this. I probably needed to be in that vein, Q, in that river of being a lamb, not the lion that I am when I'm in the gym. Because he might have would not have approached me if I'd have been that roaring lion like I am in the gym. So I was the lamb. David knew when to be a lion, when to be a lamb. So I was a lamb. So he approached me, said, a hole, I had a dream in a hole opened up in the earth. And cars and people fell in it. He was troubled when he got up. So he got up and he Googled. And I can't remember. And you might want to Google it. He said he, he Googled. He searched. And in one of these countries, I can't remember which one. Just please, somebody find it and say it was this. I hope I see him in the gym tomorrow if the Lord is coming. A hole had opened up. Thank you, woman of God. She's writing it down. A hole had opened up in one of these countries. And I said, that's probably what God was showing you. And he walked, this is what he did. Y'all look at me. He, after he said that, he Googled and looked up and it, saw, it was a place somewhere, one of these countries somewhere, where something had opened up. I guess it's been on the news, I don't know. But anyway, he, when he walked away, he looked at me. He said, something's going on. He shook his head like this. Because he's old, he said, something's going on. And then he went over there and started trying to work out. The moral of this is that after he told me that, the way he looked at me, he looked at me with deep, deep worry, concern. This is a man that has lived. He in the second half of his life. Quit taking life for granted. Amen. And he looked with deep worry, deep concern. He said, something's going on. He just, because he don't move fast. And he went on over there and walked out. He dreamed that the earth opened up. He Googled something. I hope I see him too. I need to know that. Do you know him? Are you ready? John 3, 3 says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom. He didn't say church. You cannot see the kingdom. Verse 7 says, so don't be surprised, Jesus said, when I say you must be born again. With every head bow. I know we have one guest in the house, but you may not be your first time. But you have heard something that has spoke to you. Now the heaven only has it spoke, but it encouraged you to make sure that you do a self-examination. And you are ready because of what you was taught and has been taught tonight that you want to make sure you are ready to be born from above. You now are ready to have healthy belief in the finished works of Calvary. You are ready to accept Christ and you don't want to mix next week. You don't want to miss next week. Please, the continuation of lifestyle still matters. If you're online, tune in, and if you can get her, 205 South Sheridan. But you want to know for sure that you are born again. Please don't feel no shame. Don't let the enemy rob you. I don't know what the black hole was about, I don't know why the man of God, for the first time in many years that we had been in that gym, that was the first time he ever talked to me. And what he told me was that the earth opened up. And he seen people and cars going into the earth. And he said he got up and he searched and it was something that happened that similar to that. He said, I'm just going off of what he said. I just want to make sure that I'm ready. And he looked worried.
Grandma's faith ain't going to get it, church. Grandma's God ain't going to get it. Many of us as African Americans grow up in the Baptist church and we was taught to just repeat this prayer and go on and live how you want to live. Keep your gin, keep your cigarettes, and keep shacking up and keep, when you're born again, it produces an internal transformation that would eventually, by grace, show up external. That's Bible. And your opinion don't supersede God's opinion. I preach Bible over her, Yolanda. So I'm not trying to be popular. I desire that your soul be right. Amen. So if you are here and you want to give your life to Christ, then come. Don't tarry. If that's you, then come. Anybody? I just need to know. I just got to know. It ain't, it's a necessity that I know. You're saved, Jamie. You're saved. Just listen to your pastor. You're saved. You don't have that level of transformation. The way you had grown up and the things you have been through, son. And the things you have seen and witnessed with your own eyes. If you're not born again, you wouldn't have made it. Go back that way. You don't come through stuff like that. Well, pastor, did you just turn him away? He saved. Amen. I know he saved. You don't go through what that boy had been through. Come out of what that boy had come out of if you ain't got real faith and real belief in God. I know what I'm talking about. Because his story is the same as mine. It just wasn't cracked. At least I don't think it was. Unless it's something I don't know. Are you sure? Look at me, y'all. This is Jesus. This is how he looked. Arms open, ready to receive you. He says, come. I got to know. It's a necessity. If you are here tonight and you have accepted Christ, ah, this is always a tough one. But you know your passions, appetites, and desires and there's still a lot of stuff connected to you that's weighing you down and you're dealing with life and you want to make sure that you're properly connected. You're saved, but life get hard sometimes and life get tough sometimes. We don't always make all of the right decisions, but you just want to come and cry out to the Lord as we pray before we release. And you just want to talk to God and make sure that you reconnect to the vine. Just come. Just come and stand right here. Just come and stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Lord, I believe in the finished works of Calvary, Lord. Lord, I accept you as my Lord. Have complete Dominance. I am a slave, a doulos, unto the commandments of God. Thou shalt have no other God before you. Father God, forgive us for putting gods before you. Forgive us for the little G's and all of the idols. All of the stuff, Father God, ah, that you died so that we could be free from. When we yet choose to hold on to stuff that we are free from, it's a mockery to the shedding of the blood. You said whom the Son set free is already free indeed. Help us at this altar and those that's online and those that's sitting in the pews to accept our freedom. Even though we got stuff that is attached to us, we are already free. Now it's no longer on you, it's on us. We have to make a choice to walk out that freedom. We have to make a choice to let go of those sinful passions. It's hard, Pastor. It's only hard when we try to do it by way of the flesh. So bring our flesh under submission to your spirit, Lord. We have already been delivered from opiate pills and addictions, low self-esteem, a lack of confidence, all of that stuff, Lord. My God, we are free. Help the church 
and help these and those that are still in the audience accept their freedom. I had to, and so do they. And after they accept their freedom tonight, if you wake them up tomorrow, or if you delay your coming tomorrow, we got to accept our freedom all over again. Every single day, you and I, I and you have to make a decision to live in freedom. It's not a one-time thing. It's every day. Choose this day whom you shall serve. Go ahead, son, pray, and then we're going to release the people. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. For we thank you. For we know that without you, this opportunity wouldn't even be possible. Save us. You are the great orchestrator, and we thank you, Lord, for moments and opportunities to sit at your feet. For we know that in your presence is the fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So, Lord, as we, your people, sit at your altar, and as we rest, rest in your presence, Lord, I ask that you would do what you said that you would do, that if we, that we, you told us that we could cast all our cares upon you because you cared for us. So, Lord, I and every person at this altar, we take every burden, we take every weight, we take everything that so easily besets us and knocks us off track and Lord we cast that all on you now we cast that all on you every worry every bit of anxiety every stress all the hindrances in our lives Lord we repent for not being completely and totally devoted to you at all times we repent for the hours that we let pass that we weren't devoted to you for the minutes that we let pass that we didn't give you glory for the, for, the, for the very breaths that we didn't honor you with. Lord, we, we repent from that. We repent from that and we turn, Lord. We turn to a life that glorifies you. So, Lord, clean our minds, clean our hearts, clean our bodies. Sanctify us and renew us again. We, we submit ourselves to the process of sanctification. We submit ourselves to the process of deliverance. We submit ourselves to the cleaning and the rectifying of this body. Lord, that we can we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, Lord. That we would be pleasing in your sight, Lord. Lord, you know everything. You see everything. And without a pure heart, it's impossible to please you. Without faith, it's impossible to please you. So, Lord, wash us and create in us something new creating us something new lord and help us walk it out help us walk it out in purity help us walk it out in whole thinking help us be holy all the way around whole beings lord father i pray for i pray for the silent struggles the thing that we don't the things that we don't bring to the forefront the things that people that our brothers and our sisters don't know about the things that we won't be counseled about the things that we won't speak to pastor about lord even those places the deepest and the most insecure places and the deepest of wounds and the deepest of yokes and chains and things that we picked up from childhood lord i pray for those things that those things be broken and they fall off right now that we have no issue testifying about your goodness that we have no issue testifying about what you're doing in our lives the private things the things that hurt the wounds that are still oozing we believe you to be a healer we believe you to be a healer the emotional trauma the emotional trauma we put that before the blood right now in the name of jesus emotional trauma we're set free from we're fr we're set free from the trauma of abuse we're set free from the trauma of from the trauma of, of 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 our childhoods we're set free from from anything that's not pleasing to you lord and we fully submit ourselves to the plan and to wit and to the will that you have for our lives lord mold us and shape us make us whole lord mold us and shape us and make us whole lord and the process that you're beginning in these your people lord i believe it to be carrying on throughout the rest of the days of their lives that these are sealed and sealed in the grace of the Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Father, I ask that you bless us, bless us and protect us as we go to our various destinations. 
do a mighty work even in our homes, Lord. Some of our homes need a touch from you. Some of our family members need a touch from you, Lord. Move like never before in our bloodline that generations can be saved, Lord. We give you permission and we welcome you into our residences. We, rec we welcome you into our residences. Lord, have your way, Lord. Sanctify the doorpost that anything that goes in brings you glory, Lord. We do this for your glory and your glory alone. In your son's most holy and beautiful and precious name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen.